So let's go ahead and uh, look at adding in the flag. So first thing to do is make sure that we've got the wave animation in the current clip so we can watch that, okay? Because we're gonna be attaching the flag to her hand. So we need to know where the hand is. Um, and we're just gonna model a very simple, um, very simple flag. It doesn't need to be too detailed. Well, you could do it as detailed as, as you like, but I'm not gonna bother. Um, as it's going to be very far away. So uh, we need, let's go ahead and just build this up very quickly. Uh, we need end caps in Y is fine. Let's, the radius, yeah, we need it much smaller, but we need it much taller. Okay, so we're going to make a pole. This will be the pole, obviously. Let's give it some more rows. 12 columns is fine. And then I'm going to make a, a grid. I'm going to use a grid as the actual fabric. Uh, y is, oh, sorry, the XY plane. Put the template on the pole so I can see what I'm doing. And the size, let's do, let's do it quite big. I'm going to do two, two flags, a big one and a smaller one, just for some variety, one for the woman and one for the man. Okay, and I'm going to line this up, so bring it over 10, but then a little bit more, just so it's not intersecting like that, and bring it up. Okay, that looks fine. It's blue on this side because the uh, because the normals are flipped. Doesn't really matter, but uh, you can, if it does bother you, you can reverse it. Okay, just to show you that. Um, well, so this is, we're gonna be simulating this part, obviously. So we need more subdivision there. So we could just use remesh. Whoop, not attribute map, remesh. It's a good idea to always do this before uh, using vellum. Okay, uh, we don't need too much subdivision, but this, this is fine, this is, uh, you know, more than enough uh, for our purposes. Let's give them two separate groups so we can differentiate between them later on. This is the pole, and this is the flag itself. Great, okay, so let's take a look at the vellum configure cloth. Uh, they should be reversed. So this this course is more is a, a crowd's course. So we're not going to go into too much detail with the vellum parts, okay? But that'll be good enough for our purposes. So that'll set up uh, all of our constraints between the uh, points. And then, well, this is not going to be collision geometry, but it's going to be used as a, um, something to attach to. It will be collision geometry later on. So we've got our cloth set up. So now we need to build constraints between the cloth and the pole. So we drop a vellum attached to geometry there. Connect that up. So you can see by default it's connecting, I think, every single point to this pole. Um, we don't need that. In fact, we don't want that. So we'll give it a weird behavior. So we turn the max distance on and then just point 0.1 should be fine. There you can see, you know, by raising this, you get more points. Okay, but we don't need so many. Just one is fine. Um, what I'm going to do is put the rest length to zero and that way, you know, this should snap onto the pole or if not, you know, help it stay as close as possible. Uh, we can quickly test this. So let's drop a vellum solver. Connect that up. By the way, if you notice there, the way I, because these have got three inputs and outputs, if you hold it on top of, or well, just a, below the node, you can see it connects up all three inputs for you automatically. If not, you can do a shift click hold shift click 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 
and then drop it on one and it will connect them off for you. So let's just take a quick look at that just to make sure it's working. Okay, that's fine. You can see it's holding on. Great. Uh, delete the solver. We don't want the solver. Just to make sure it's working. So uh, we need the constraints and the geometry in one thing to, and then we're going to connect it into a layer here. Okay. So to bring them together, we need a vellum pack, and this just has two inputs because we don't need. We're not going to pack in the uh, collision geometry as well. Okay. So that's going to pack them together, and then we drop a null. Pull this out. Um, yeah, we're going to do two separate flags. So I'll call this one flag. Move that over. Because I also want the pole. Okay, we need to connect that up as well. So, oops. Out woman and pole. Okay, and then. So let's drop another agent layer. So this the same as similar to what we've been doing here. Okay, we use this to add in some geometry. And let's visualize. So we can't see anything now. So the name will be flag. Do it in lower lowercase. Flag. We're going to set this as a current layer so we can visualize it. The source layer is something to build on. Okay, so I don't want the default with all of the clothes. We can use one of these. You can choose any one. I'll just use number one. Uh, number one, I want it, yeah. And we're going to add to this, okay? So we're going to add two layer bindings, right? And before we used, I think the hips are, yeah, the hips for the transform. But now we're going to be using the hand because I want the flag, the flag to follow the hand, not her general, um, not the general animation, right? So we come here and grab left hand. You can see it's adding this collision geometry, right? It's got this collision geometry by default for for um, uh, ragdolls, but you know we're not doing that yet. And the shape, so we're not going to be using the shape from within the FBX. Obviously, we're going to be joining in this geometry. So we're going to add shape and then it asks for the sub pass. So we'll drop in the flag. Okay, we still don't see it because we need a name. Let's call it flag. And we see the flag. And we'll do the same here. So add shape. Sub path will be the pole. And the shape name will be pole. <clears throat> and I think yeah, if we turn off key position when attaching, well, at the moment that won't affect it because we need to actually put it in place. But if you watch, you can see it's following along her animation. And by the way, don't worry about the clip properties. OK, it doesn't matter that this is branching off beforehand. You know that it won't affect that. OK. So th this is just to tell the flag where does it sit in relation to the hand, right? Okay, so we need to transform this geometry to, you know, be in a in the correct place in relation to a hand. So you can either do that. I think you can do it here somehow. I think. Let's see. Oh, shape transform. Okay. But uh, it's a bit annoying because you don't really have your a gizmo, right? So I can't do that in the screen here. I, I have to do it here. So what I find is easier is just transforming it beforehand, okay? So if I drop a transform here, and obviously I want to transform both of these together. So what you can do is just, if you right click, go to Actions, Create Reference Copy. And this means that whatever I do here, the same thing will happen on this side as well, right? So I'm going to grab the flag and just position it into her hand. 
Start the pullet. Out. Now, yeah, if it's, it's obviously there, it's intersecting with the floor. So don't worry about that. Um, because remember the we've got the clip properties and we've just so we're just worrying about from here to here right so what is a problem is the pole kind of passing there okay going into her body so we need to transform it so it's not doing that so and it's a bit difficult here you know to eye it up so I'm just looking there and I can see I need the pole to be turning to you know this way away from her hand and maybe a bit forward this way as well right so basically it needs to be turned down a bit right and maybe I think uh, a bit this way as well let's take a look at that Getting closer. Still, yeah, I think quite a bit more <clears throat> down like that. Can be a bit fiddly this <clears throat> getting it to work correctly, but you know, it is what it is. What's most important really is, is the flag itself not intersecting with with her. <clears throat> the pole going into a bit doesn't matter really because the pole is not going to be simulated. And the pole is passing through her head there, which is no fun. Let's see how far down does she go the other way? Yeah, I think we can go further this way. That's better. Great. Okay. So I think that's okay now. So remember, yeah, it's passing through her there, but that's not part of our actual animation. Great. So that's all ready to go for her, I think. Um, no, I'll leave that on. Great. Okay. And then next video, we'll do the same, but for the man.